Good morning. morning. I'm Pastor Sandra, and I'm glad that we can come together for worship. But greet you that have come out this morning. Look, you brought sunshine with you, so thank you. Appreciate that. And if you're joining us online, we hope that you're enjoying the sun breaking out wherever you are at this time. We've been working our way through the Lord's Prayer and our sermon series, and today Jesus um, speaks to us about forgiveness. And uh, hopefully we can all gain some insight about God's forgiveness for us, but then how we allow that to transform us so that we can forgive others. I hope that you'll take a moment and sign the um, connection pad. And if you're online, you can connect with us also. This is a way for us to connect with one another uh, as we continue to move forward. Um, I hope that you'll uh, join us in our call to worship, and Abby's going to lead us this morning. All right, uh, please join me. Know that the Lord is God. God made us. We are God's people. I will offer praise and thanksgiving and bless God's holy name. The Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God is faithful to all generations. Though I may stumble, God's steadfast love endures forever. Please join me in our our opening prayer. Lord, our Father, open our eyes to the goodness in the world and let us see your kingdom here on earth. God, we pray that we may live into the life you have planned for us. Let us be filled with joy and peace and give us teachable spirits that we would learn how to forgive those who have hurt us and ask for forgiveness in our own moments of error. Let your word fill our hearts and let us feel your presence today. In Jesus' name, amen.
I invite you to be seated. So we come to our time of prayer this morning. Uh, we remember all those that come to our hearts, and including Ruthie this morning, who was to provide our special music, but is a bit under the weather. And uh, although she's feeling better today, she feels um, you know, really bad that she can't be here to uh, sing. But uh, we pray for you, Ruthie, if you're tuning in. And um, as we come to our time of prayer, um, Amy's going to kind of draw us into prayer. Uh, since we're talking about forgiveness today, I also note that we're going to begin our time of prayer with a litany that's found on page 893. And so that's how we'll begin our time of prayer, uh, following our um, musical um, um, introduction to that. And in, as we've journeyed through the Lord's Prayer, we're singing the Lord's Prayer. And today is a little different version uh, sung to the tune of Immortal Invisible God. So it's a familiar tune and the words are in the bulletin. So um, just as we come to our time of prayer, may we know the Lord wants to commune with us, speak to us, hear us. So may we uh, have an attitude of prayer. The Lord be with you.
us pray. Lord, we confess our day-to-day -day failure to be truly human. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that we often fail to love with all we have and are, often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we are afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that by silence and ill-considered word, we have built up walls of prejudice. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come, fill this moment, and free us from sin. Oh, holy God, we thank you for the good news of Christ that does free us from our sin, seeks to restore us to wholeness, seeks to help us live lives that are transformed and united with you. We, your people, Lord, sing your praise, for you are faithful and merciful and kind. Lord, this day we come with the burdens that threaten to weigh us down, and so we're grateful that our sin is forgiven. And we pray that you will come into those dark places of our lives and shine your light. In the places of grief, we pray for those who mourn. In the places of uncertainty and pain and fear, we lift up to you those that are facing health challenges, for those whose families are broken, for those who face uncertain futures, for those that do not know how they'll be fed today, or they do not know what their job is going to be. We pray, Lord, for all those who are struggling in whatever way for mental anguish, for spiritual unrest. Whatever it is, Lord, break through and may your spirit bring healing and wholeness and hope. Encourage us, Lord, as your people, but also as your church to continue to live into the teachings of your kingdom so that we might indeed reflect your grace, your mercy, your kindness and compassion into our neighborhood and into the world. And these uncertain times where we continue to see division and strife and, and we're not sure what um, tomorrow looks like, we yearn for what tomorrow was, we want that to return and yet we know that, that things are different. So Lord, fill us with your peace and as your people, as your church continue to Grant us strength and perseverance to provide the hope and encouragement and assurance that comes because we're seeking your kingdom, the kingdom that Jesus brings and ushers in and then empowers us to live into. This day, Lord, we trust in your power and your grace and your mercy to transform us. It's an ongoing process, but we trust you, Lord, with our lives. And we pray that today there will be evidence of your presence in our lives that others will see the difference that you are making. Oh, hear our prayer, O oh Lord. The cries of our hearts, the needs that we each bring, and lift that burden, Lord. May your spirit rest upon us and among us as we seek to be your people. We pray this. In the name of Christ, and for Christ's sake, amen.
know about you, but I kind of like these different versions of kind of awakening the Lord's Prayer um, for us in a new way. I have just a, a couple announcements to share with you uh, as we continue in our worship together. Uh, tomorrow it's November. How'd that happen? I, you know, it just seems like October went uh, quickly. November means Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And that means Mentor's Thanksgiving dinner will be here our 31st year. In addition to your financial support, there are many ways for you to help with this outreach in our community. You can donate food items, help with prep work. You can do dishes, because I know some of you really like to do that. You can sign up to deliver meals. The Sign Up Genius is located on our website. Uh, you just go to our website, mentorumc.org, and you uh, click on the tab, 2021 Thanksgiving Dinner. I tried it, and if I can do it, you can do it. It is easy, and the sign up is there for all the donations that are needed. Uh, you can do a turkey, you can donate items, you can serve in the prep work. So I hope that you'll uh, check that out and be a part of this important fellowship, but also outreach in our community. And if you know of someone who is in need of a meal, please call the church office so that we can make sure they get on our list. November also means that Advent is approaching. The first Sunday of Advent is the last Sunday of November. There are plans for a movie night, for a church-wide um, study that we're going to participate in. Practice for our Christmas musical, The Grunch, has begun. Uh, you can sign up to light the Advent wreath in one of our worship services. Uh, please note that orders for the Advent calendars are due next Sunday. So I know many of you have this as a family tradition. Maybe you buy them for your grandchildren. I have a grandson now, so I guess I need to um, buy one. He might be a little early to know what's going on, but it's never too early to begin teaching Fletcher about these things. Those orders are ne due next Sunday. So again, for all these things about Advent, check out our website, the church app, the weekly update should be emailed to you. And if you don't receive that, you could sign up or there are printed copies at the back that you can pick up on your way out. Next Sunday, we are also launching the gathering at 11 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Today is our last Sunday in the park. And look, at it, it, sun's coming out. I, I feel so glad for the folks that are at the park today. Um, next Sunday, we will come back into the building for an intergenerational, intentional time of worship uh, where we can have uh, connections and community. So the gathering is for a season, but we seek to uh, connect with those that may want to wear a mask. This will be a mask-only service. Um, there will, we will engage with the scripture of the day and seek to grow in our love of Jesus. If you have any questions, please speak with me or Pastor Michaela. Next Sunday, we will also have fellowship time uh, between, the 10 and, uh, between 10 and 11 prior to the 11 o'clock worship and also after um, our worship service. And so uh, as you're, you may need a cup of coffee as your body adjusts to the time change, right? Next Saturday, we fall back. So really, you'll all get an extra hour of sleep. So you all just be chipper and ready to worship next Sunday. We are grateful for your ongoing support of our mission and ministry. If you have brought your offering this morning, we continue to um, receive those by our offering boxes that you can place your offering in the box as you leave. You can sign up to give online or mail in your offering. Together, we are seeking to make a difference in the community on the, the um for the sake of Christ. So as we pause and think about how we can offer ourselves back to the Lord, may we reflect upon how good and gracious and merciful our God is to you.
We are grateful, Lord, for the many ways that you reveal your love and mercy to us. We pray that you will receive back all that we offer to you. Take our gifts, Lord, and use them so that others will come to have eyes to see and ears to hear, minds to comprehend, hearts that are transformed because they have come to know the love you have for them. Thank you, Lord, for all that you offer to us, for being our provider. And we pray that your mercy and grace will flow through us until there is indeed evidence of your kingdom on earth. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. I invite you to be seated. No, we quickly close our hymnals, but I, as we were singing that earlier uh, in our earlier service, you know, I just note it, those words were penned in 1740 by Charles Wesley, the, the brother of John, who they both uh, formed the, the Methodist movement. And as you read those words and sing them, it's just kind of still our human condition a brokenness, a sinfulness that we just sometimes recognize how fallen we are, and yet God's mercy and grace reaches out to us. That's the good news of Christ's mercy that is extended to us. And as we continue to look at the Lord's Prayer today, we, we think about this forgiveness that God offers to us that then is meant to transform our lives. We continue to look at the Lord's Prayer found in Matthew's Gospel as well as Luke's. We've been looking at Luke's version. So let us once again hear the word of the Lord uh, beginning uh, with the first verse in chapter 11. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. We ask God for, for forgiveness, and 
then also consider how our forgiveness ex extended to others. Our youth were recently asked about forgiveness, and uh, you can view their full video by logging on to our website and uh, clicking on the nine o'clock service where it was shared in its entirety. But we're going to listen to three of their responses. So you kind of have to attune, but this is three of our youth's response to the question, what, what does forgiveness mean to you? Forgiveness to me is when you believe that someone can still be okay even if they have done something wrong to you before. So like if someone has done something bad to you, you could still forgive them and you can believe that they're going to be a good person later on. When you are forgiven and you've like when you've done something wrong and someone's forgiven you, they have basically told you that yes what you did was wrong but it's okay and as long as you learn from what you did they are not going to be mad at you for it anymore I think forgiveness is when someone wrongs you being able to move forward and you know behave in a way that is loving towards them despite what they have done against you or that has upset you. So you can still find a way forward that uh, even when they've wronged you, it isn't forever. <laughs> the uh, definition of forgive is to give up resentment against or the desire to punish to pardon an offense or an offender. Jesus' mission was to usher in God's kingdom, to restore creation and humanity that we are sinful, we have broken our relationship with God, so Jesus came to restore. So we are redeemed and renewed we are made right with God, that we are forgiven, and we are undeserving at times. We may not want, you know, necessarily want to give up everything, but that's mercy. That mercy, God is merciful and kind, that even when we're undeserving of forgiveness, we are forgiven. We don't need to worry that it's held against us, that there is a path forward because of Christ that we no, need to be burdened by the mistakes of our lives. There is no longer a separation. In fact, Scripture proclaims nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus comes to offer forgiveness. Throughout the Gospels and certainly throughout the Lord's Prayer, we see the kingdom of God proclaimed. We seek to live into, and Jesus invites us to pray that, that this kingdom would come and dwell within us and be experienced through us. That's Jesus' teaching. So we're drawn into an intimate relationship with God that we can call God Father. We can, can have a parent intimate relationship with the creator of the world. The, the Father of our Lord is our Father, holy and, and hallowed, sacred, set apart so that we can have the power that we need to face the trials of life. We ask God to be the giver of bread, of forgiveness, and of deliverance. God is our provider. Jesus, throughout the Gospels and and you could probably think of some examples of Jesus extending forgiveness. Go, your, your sins are forgiven. Of, of reaching out and incorporating the outcast. Providing a new opportunity for people that can be your homework. Think of a, a situation, a story in scriptures that, that is meaningful to you. I think there's many examples, but I've 
gone to earlier in Luke's gospel, the, the seventh chapter for one example for us this morning. Beginning at verse 36, when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, Jesus went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. I'm going to pause in the story for a moment and just ask if you have ever known the power of conviction. Have you ever um, been brought to tears because of your sin and brokenness? I mean, this could be a, a sin, a really a sin against God, that you um, had begun to live out uh, the fullness of life, abundance that Jesus promised to bring, but you've begun to define that yourself. You've made sinful choices, selfish choices. Well, thank you very much. I'll decide what I want to do to bring about the fullness of my life. Maybe you've been at, angry at God and, and cried out and cursed God for a situation in your life or for uh, something that's been happening in a family member or even in the world. Maybe you've doubted God and God's presence um, God's provision. Maybe your, your sinfulness is something that you've done to someone else, that you've meant to bring harm, that they've done something to you perhaps and you've retaliated, or you've just kind of placed them in a category and spoken ill will into them or about them. Maybe you've meant to hurt someone, but maybe sometimes you've not meant to, that you've been convicted, the power of conviction in that you realize you've hurt someone and you didn't mean to. They misconstrued what you, you meant. Or maybe you just didn't respond to a need that they had and they feel like you've overlooked them and you're not sure what to do with that neglect, those feelings that you are responsible for inflicting pain upon someone. Or maybe it, that others have inflicted pain upon you, and that brings you to your knees because you're not sure what to do with the hurt and harm that is placed upon you. And it's hard to figure out how you could possibly forgive them because of how wounded you feel. The woman who came to the Pharisee's house lived a sinful life. It's not clear exactly what her sin was, but apparently it was obvious to everyone. Especially the Pharisees whose home she came into. It was an outsider who came in, and the Pharisee isn't quite sure what to do with this information. She lived a sinful life. And even we today categorize sinful lives. We look around and we're like, well, look at that sinful person. Look at the sin that they're living into. And what bothered Simon the Pharisee just as much as the sinful woman coming into his house was that Jesus didn't seem to recognize it. That the prophet... The one that the, man, the Pharisee had invited over to his house to have dinner with so he could sit down and kind of get to know him better. I mean, he was a Pharisee. He was the religious person. Who is this Jesus? What bothered the Pharisee was that Jesus didn't seem to recognize the woman's sinfulness. 
that Jesus allowed her to cross over a boundary, allowed her to be close to him, allowed this conviction of her sin to pour out. It was embarrassing. It was unheard of to have a woman weep and, and pour ointment on his feet. I mean, if Jesus was really the prophet that he seemed to portray himself as or other people were beginning to believe he was, Jesus would know the sins of this woman and not let that boundary happen. problem or burden that comes when we allow sin to invade our lives is in a way the opposite of the definition of forgiveness and we so we, we can use this definition so if we allow this kind of burden of unforgiveness to take hold of us it is to hold on to resentment and hold on to a desire to punish it is to punish an offense or an offender, to hold it against them, to keep them at harm's, arm's length. And this can consume us, that we begin to then judge others and we retaliate against them, that then that begins to affect the way we view others. This is what happened to the Pharisee. He viewed the woman and then that began to infect the way he viewed Jesus. We lose focus on the blessing and the abundance and the fullness that God wants to bring into our lives, but also into other people's lives. We don't show hospitality. We're not welcoming we don't show transformation in our lives. Instead, we, we create barriers. We don't recognize the worth or possibility of others. We keep them outside the circle. We can be consumed with our own self-loathing when we feel broken, but that can also um, impact the way we treat others. And we begin to not pass on forgiveness, but instead hold on to resentment and retaliation. This is a burden that can limit us. Many of you know Matthew 7, 3, Jesus speaking. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? See, we all have spots and blemishes and trespasses. Jesus offered a different perspective. Jesus said to Simon, I have something to tell you. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50 Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. Jesus said, you have judged correctly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, which I think is significant, he turns and looks at the woman who he is, has accepted and is in his presence, but he speaks to Simon. Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. Whoever has been forgiven little loves little. 
Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. See, Jesus did know the woman. Jesus knew the woman's past, her sinfulness, and yet he extended grace and mercy and forgiveness into her life. And in his parable, he helps Simon the Pharisee as well as everyone else in his home and all of us even generations later to recognize the free flowing mercy and grace of God is meant to transform all of us. Whoever knows forgiveness extends love. That's how we recognize that they've come to understand and receive forgiveness. So whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Thus to know love and mercy and forgiveness of God is to love big. Forgive big. Jesus' kingdom will be about forgiveness and it's supposed to be big. It's supposed to be big. If you know Christ's forgiveness, you will forgive. Not judge or be cynical. Hold out on anger. Be about retaliation. Because these things weigh us down. It's not easy, but to allow God's forgiveness to sink into us, we would say, forgive as we forgive. That it's a free flowing. That as other people receive our forgiveness, they will recognize it's God at work within us. So as surely as we seek to help God who provides, provide for others. And as surely as we pray that God's kingdom would come among us and that we can be a part of it coming, we pray that God would forgive us and that we would be those that then forgive that others will see that this grace and mercy is free flowing. God's forgiveness is not contingent upon you forgiving someone else. That's putting um, limits on God's forgiveness. No, God forgives you. But if you then truly know God's forgiveness in your life, you will seek to forgive others. Because if you can't forgive others, you just say, well, I can't simply, I simply can't do that. Then you've not truly come to know the forgiveness and mercy of God in your own life. That's what Jesus teaches us to pray. That all the limitations or all the, the realities of our lives would be eliminated. That God's forgiveness would come and that as we forgive others, people will see this forgiveness at work. If you can't forgive, then you've not really come to understand God's forgiveness in your life. I was thinking about this, and uh, I was doing some yard work. Like many of you, you're probably getting your yards ready for winter. Even here, a couple of you are heading south. That's how you're dealing with winter. Well, that's good, but I'm, I'm sticking it out here in northeast Ohio. So we were putting our, um, you know, kind of getting the flower beds ready and stuff. And I thought, I'll help Tom out. I'm going to put the garden hose away. So I go over and I seek to um, unfasten the garden hose. And I'm telling you, that man of mine is strong. He has tightened that sucker so hard, I, cannot, I could not budge it. I mean, not even a little bit. It was like on there. And I was thinking about, like, we had planted these new flowers at the back, and through the, the summer, we would pull the garden hose out to water the flowers at the back. And I'd no more and get way out there and seek to water them, and there'd be a kink in the hose way back there. Has that ever happened to you? It's way back there. So I go and unkink it. And I was thinking about the, the mercy and forgiveness of God. It's kind of like a garden hose. Stick with me.
At least I think it's like a garden house. You know, we, we sometimes put limits on God's mercy and grace. But you know what? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. The love of God is secured in Jesus that there's, even if I got the wrench to hook, unhook that garden hose, well, you know, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. That's mercy and grace. It's free flowing. It's yours. Isn't that wonderful? This is the redemption story. This is Jesus coming in, into the world and ushering in his kingdom. That there would be grace, free flowing. That you would be forgiven and restored and renewed. Life giving water, freely flowing. But you and me, we kink the hose at times, don't we? The, the mercy flows into me, and I'm like, you know, I'm not really sure I can forgive Chuck. I'm not really sure that I can, you know, let go of that. That we put a kink in the hose. Or we're like the nozzle at the end. That you can adjust the spray. You know, like, I really like Jan, so I'm just going to shoot that forgiveness out to her, no problem. But I'm not really sure that I can get over Kate over here. So I just click it down. That's like, that's like what we do, isn't it? But that is not God's grace. That is not what Jesus taught his, his followers to pray. Jesus taught his followers to pray, God, forgive. Let your mercy and grace flow into me because I am broken, I am sinful, I hurt others, I am on my knees. Sometimes the power of conviction makes me weep, and other times I just flow on by and don't even know it. But Lord, I pray you, you would forgive. You keep that mercy and grace flowing, and that's what God does in Jesus. But Jesus says, forgive us as we forgive others. So it seems to me that what Jesus is teaching us to pray is that we would keep the kinks out. That we would let the grace and mercy flow. That the kingdom of God would be evident because we are allowing that grace to flow through us and among us so that all will come to know the kingdom of God at hand. These aren't just words or an image I'm trying to paint for us this morning. This equips us for the work. So this morning, think of someone you need to forgive or you long to have them receive your forgiveness or, or they've hurt you and you're not sure what to do with that. Think about that person. You are equipped to forgive them. You are equipped to forgive them. First, you must recognize it and confess it and allow the power of conviction to allow the tears to flow. Wish it was different, Lord. I don't know how I can get over the pain they've inflicted upon me. You gotta confess it. Repent it. Give it to the Lord. We're not sure how that woman got to Jesus in a Pharisee's home. She just burst right in because Jesus wants the sinner in his presence. Jesus wants the broken in his midst. Jesus embraces those that are in need. The sinful woman who is obviously broken as well as the religious upright who do not know they are in need. But Jesus is in the midst, receiving and recognizing and then transforming and empowering and sending us to reciprocate, not retaliate, but reciprocate the love of Christ. That we would allow the kinks to be out of our lives that we would get rid of the nozzles that we choose who we're maybe going to enter into relationship with. 
we would seek to be those who allow the forgiveness and mercy of God to flow in us and through us that the kingdom of God would be recognized. Forgive us as we forgive. May it be free-flowing, Lord. Get rid of the kinks. Flow through us. Let your life-giving water flow so that your kingdom of forgiveness is realized in the world. This is what Jesus' followers pray. This is not what the world cares about. But as we seek to pray as Jesus teaches us, we pray that we will know forgiveness in our lives. You are forgiven. Do not be burdened by your past mistakes. Be freed from them. But then that water's got to flow. Life-giving water. So that the kingdom of God can be at hand. Through your forgiveness. May it be so for each of us. Let us pray. Holy God, this day we, we seek to receive your forgiveness. We confess our sins and failures, so do not let us move forward carrying that burden. But instead, allow your life-giving water to flow in us, redeeming and restoring and renewing us. And Lord, help us to get the kinks out of the way. Help us not to have nozzles and choose who we're going to extend love and mercy and grace to. Help us know that we're forgiven, so we're to forgive big. This is your kingdom coming among us. This is why you teach us to pray for your spirit to be at work within us and among us. We can't do this on our own. But you teach us, your followers, to be so bold as to pray that you will forgive us. And that forgiveness will extend out and help us forgive others. May it be so, Lord, in Christ. Amen. may the grace and mercy of God, the Father revealed in Jesus Christ, your Lord, and the power of the Holy Spirit send you forth this day to live as forgiven people and to extend forgiveness into the world. 
Amen.